Hi, Cineflix Compact here. Today, I'm going to explain a film called American Sniper, which is a war thriller. Keep an eye out and be cautious. During the opening scene, the Marines are on a mission to clear the city. Observing the troops from above, Chris Kyle and his SEAL colleague notice a woman and her child on the rooftop. Upon receiving an RKG grenade from the woman and being told to throw it towards the Marines, he is astonished. Chris is getting ready to pull the trigger as he looks through his scope. In a flashback, we see Chris as a child with his father, who is showing him the basics of hunting. He and his brother Jeff return home from Mass to find their father lecturing them about the various kinds of people in the world. In the next scene, we see Jeff being bullied by other kids, but Chris steps up and defends his younger sibling. He chastises them for the misdeeds they've committed but he is pleased because Chris, the smaller of the two, defeats the larger one. After a number of years, Chris found himself working on ranches and competing in rodeos. His girlfriend is with another man when he and Jeff arrive home. Chris told his girlfriend to leave after she tried to play a prank on him. Chris becomes enraged when he hears of a terrorist incident while the two brothers are drinking. Next day, he goes to enlist in the military at the Career Center of the United States Armed Forces. After that, he'll be sent to train with the Navy SEALs. Chris made it into the Navy SEALs after through a long and arduous training process. He bumps into a woman named Taya at the bar and they begin a conversation. Despite Taya's initial reluctance to date someone from the SEALs, Chris is able to win her over once they actually go out on a date. Chris and Taya watch the World Trade Center terror assault on the news together one day. After a long day, the couple cuddles up in bed and plans for the future. Later on in their relationship, Chris and Taya decide to tie the knot. In spite of the fact that Chris has only a few days left with his wife, Taya is assured that he is all right. Chris and his colleagues are tasked with protecting the Marines who will be clearing the area of terrorists during his first tour in Fallujah. One soldier tells Chris about an enemy sniper named Mustafa who is reputed to be able to shoot from 500 yards away as they make their way to their post on a rooftop. With no other option, Chris shoots and kills the child in the present. As soon as she has her hands on the grenade, she tries to run to the Marines, but Chris manages to take her out with a single shot. Despite the praise he's received, Chris isn't satisfied about killing a mother and her child. Chris' teammates congratulate him on his kill count the next day, but Chris is upset in himself for enabling Mustafa to kill a Marine the night before when he had just taken one down. The nickname, Legend, was given to him by a fellow soldier named Biggles in the barracks, and it has stuck with him ever since. After that, Chris gets a call from Taya, and it's revealed that she's pregnant. Taya weeps as she watches the death toll of American soldiers on the television, and the two miss each other. After that, Taya suddenly recalls Chris' father and tells Chris to call him. As it turns out, Jeff is also serving in the military's campaign against ISIS. The soldiers are now debating their next assignment when the scene switches to them. They are tasked with bringing down the Al-Qaeda leader, Abu Musab al-Zarqawi, and his aides. They met up again and Chris wants to work with the Marines, but Mark informs him that everyone feels safe under his watchful eye with his sniper rifle, so they agree to work together on the ground. A Marine is killed when he enters a house during a clearing operation. As a result, Chris decides to go with the flow and join the ground crew. With the help of the Marines, they were able to apprehend a family and question the father about the terrorists' whereabouts. The man informs Chris about Zarqawi's top soldier, the butcher, who is being translated by a Marine. To compensate for the risks they will be taking by helping with the Americans, Chris requests more information, but his father demands $100,000. Chris is given the name Amir Caliph Fanis, which is the real name of the butcher, after consenting to the bargain. They return to the individual with his money after verifying the intelligence department's findings. Taya contacts Chris from the truck and informs him that their child is a boy. However, their joy is short-lived when Mustafa, their driver's assassin, shoots them down. 
Taya weeps as he hears the gunfire on the phone and is concerned for his husband. Mirroring the butcher, Chris sees the man's son being carried by the butcher. It is impossible for them to engage because of the sniper's position. Meanwhile, the man begs the butcher, but the butcher murders the youngster with his drill when the man begs him. The butcher's men shoot the man to death as he tries to get to his son. The butcher then makes a death threat against anyone who joins the Americans. Chris is now on his way home. When Chris hears mechanical noises, we see him start to show signs of post-traumatic stress disorder. Later, Chris goes with his wife to her doctor's appointment, but the doctor senses something wrong with him. She then determines that Chris has hypertension after taking his blood pressure. Just when Chris and Taya are debating whether or not Chris should be telling the truth about his pregnancy, Taya has an overwhelming urge to give birth. After that, Taya discovers Chris watching a video of an American soldier being shot and the two dispute once more. In Taya's opinion, his husband is not well, but he refuses to admit it. When Chris sees his brother, the scene shifts to Chris on his second tour. However, Something is definitely awry when he sees Jeff and he approaches him right away. Afraid Chris hasn't told him, he tells his brother that they're both proud of what he has accomplished. When Jeff returns to his unit, he curses the location as he departs. Chris is perplexed, but he persists in getting to his vehicle. A group of his fellow soldiers informs him that he's the most wanted guy in Iraq, and Chris simply laughs it off. Kyle will lead the search for the butcher on this tour. As soon as they get into an apartment, they make sure the family has nothing on them and then set up a checkpoint. Asked if they've met the butcher, the family denied it. For Eid al-Adha dinner, they happily accept an invitation from their father. Chris senses something wrong with the man's arm during the meal, so he leaves the table. His search for weapons leads him to an unexpected discovery, a trap door. This man is brought into the room by Chris in a flash. Afterwards, they work out an arrangement with him to get entry to the butcher's residence. Afterwards, the troops take up position while a man knocks on the door of the butcher's eatery. A shootout ensues once the door is opened by the sniper, who rapidly subdues the terrorist. The butcher escapes through a tunnel in the back after the soldiers have cleared the area. Despite his best efforts, Chris pursues and shoots them, causing the truck to explode and killing the butcher. It shifts to a repair shop where Kyle and his kid are being approached by a man they know. Back in Fallujah, Chris was thanked by a soldier for saving his life and defending their country. The man tells Chris to stop by the Veterans Affairs Healthcare Center once in a while before they part ways. After that, we show Chris in the hospital's nursery marveling at his baby daughter. When he sees his infant sobbing, he immediately calls for the nurse to come attention to her, but he quickly grows frustrated when no one responds. Finally, we show Taya nursing her baby while Chris talks with Taya about her loneliness and how the war is changing Chris. If they see Mustafa's troops on rooftops, Chris and buddies notify him to their presence by calling his name. Suddenly, the van's occupants begin firing at them, but they manage to take them out. They clear the rooftop as soon as possible. Biggles is shot in the face by Mustafa as they set up security. In response to their appeal for assistance, they promptly retreated and transported Biggles back to the base for medical attention. To avenge Biggles, Chris and the rest of the squad return to the region where they were last seen. When they are ambushed while removing debris from a structure, Mark is unfortunately shot and killed. Chris and Taya now find themselves at the wakes of their loved ones. At Biggles' hospital bedside, we see Chris visit and convince him that they will avenge Biggles. Chris encourages Taya to look for a new boyfriend if he doesn't return home. Eventually, Taya breaks down and admits she needs him. When Chris returns, she tells him that if he ever leaves again, she and the children may be gone. But Chris is still going on his fourth tour despite this. Biggles, tragically, was killed during an operation by one of their comrades. In the next meeting, they talk about their objective to kill the enemy sniper and aid the engineers in finishing the wall they are building, 
which is said to be extremely helpful in winning the war for them. The problem is that it's located in the heart of the enemy's stronghold, and a sandstorm is brewing outside your window. Following their preparations, they head to the area and take up positions on the rooftop. At the same time, Mustafa, who is on another rooftop, kills a soldier with a single blow. Chris is alerted to Mustafa's whereabouts and swiftly determines that he is approximately 2,100 yards away. When he informs the base of the incident, they inform him that the reaction squad is around 20 minutes away. As a result, one of Chris's comrades warns him not to shoot for the time being for fear of exposing their location. However, Mustafa's colleagues are going to be assassinated and are in his direct line of fire. Chris has no option but to take a chance and ends up killing Mustafa. Even though they've completed their job, they're attacked by the attackers below. Chris and his comrades respond to the threat. They run out of ammo after a while, but the enemy keeps coming. When Chris' colleagues are running low on ammo and a sandstorm is approaching, one of them demands an airstrike. After that, Chris phones Taya to let her know that he's ready to head back to his apartment. In spite of this, the SEALs are forced to travel on foot through the sandstorm because of the oncoming sandstorm. Everyone, thankfully, made it out of the situation unscathed. Chris is now sitting in a bar, sipping on something when Taya's phone rings. They miss him so much, so she tells him to come back. Chris is in a trance the next day, thinking back to his time in the military. Later, as he and Taya watch their children play, he notices their dog attacking his son and snaps at him. Taya intervenes in Chris' attempt to punch the dog. Chris finally enters the Veterans Affairs Healthcare Center after realizing what is happening to him. It is determined that Chris's ability to deal with the stress of the war is impaired, but Chris maintains that he is well. To be fair, he believes the people he killed haunt him more than the ones he could have saved. The doctor introduces Chris to a veteran's support group after seeing his desire to save more lives. Since then, Chris has been spending more time in the hospital's psychiatric ward. When Chris and his family return to Texas, the scene shifts at that point. Taya's affection for him is restored after he spends time with his family in the woods. In order to make up for the time he missed with his family, Chris makes an extra effort to spend more time with them. On February 2, 2013, he plans to accompany a war veteran to a shooting range as part of his efforts to aid those who have served their country in the armed services. Before he leaves, he urges his kid to always look out for his mother and sister, and bids them farewell. Taya walks with his husband to the front entrance with his hand on his hip and smiles. Taya's expression darkens as she closes the door carefully after witnessing the veteran. The veteran shoots and kills Chris on the same day, as indicated by an on-screen subtitle. Crowds line the route, American flags flying, as Chris' funeral procession passes by. At the end of the film, additional people are depicted gathering at the legend's funeral. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notification, hit the like button to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.